Are you, are, you, are you in front of the computer? And away we go. Uh, hi, Brandon here again with Hussy Percussion, and I have video number two in this series. Um, so this is Molar Motion. This is a continuation of Molar Motion plus the accent tap. So in here, we're going to take the rests out and we're going to put notes in. This means more of a constant and consistent motion, and we're gonna be applying the weight changes and focus on the sound changes, or the dynamic contrast between a piano note and then a forte note, a loud, big motion, and a piano, quiet, soft. Also, the speed in the hand, or the speed of the bead, should feel fast at an accent height, no matter what number you put to this, 15 or 12 or whatever. It's forte and it's fast and it should feel loud. At the piano height, we're going for not only a low picture, and I hate to use that word as if a visual gives you sound, but it's good to note that a lower note travels a shorter distance. And we could use that to our advantage to increase our range, again, our range of sound and our range of motion. At piano, we wanna think the bead isn't moving as fast or the stick isn't moving as fast if we want to play true piano. Now this depends on tempo, this depends on the demand of the part um, or the rudiment, whatever you're playing. But it, essentially, piano should essentially piano should sound soft, and that's the goal here. So you may have noticed I have my notebook here, and I I just want to iterate that uh, a friend of mine, Matt Lowe, he told me and others every day at rehearsals, take notes and make a checklist and do a physical, tangible account of what you rehearsed and what your goals are. Because if you're looking at your idea, if you're looking at your ideas, chances are you're gonna expand on those ideas. So anyway, I invite you to take notes and it helps, it totally does. Speaking of notes, I have another, I guess some diddle doodle notebook that I use. And this one, I, I feel more freedom to kind of creatively write like journal, journal thoughts. And then in the fancier notebook, um, I take time to maybe write slower and ca more carefully, more legibly. Let's see how this applies to drums. So if you have hopefully broken down molar strokes video, um, then this exercise should be easy to fill in or understand. We're gonna keep the accents on the same hands and then we're just gonna fill in the spaces with a note or with a piano tap. We'll play it one time through with right, right, left, left, constant sticking, just right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. And this will lead to tap accent or upstrokes. Or you, I like to just call them tap strokes and upstrokes. So what you do after denotes or gives it the characteristic definition. Tap strokes, stay at taps. And then up strokes, we're gonna be lifting and end in an up or a tacit up position, right? So here we go. If we change the sticking and start with the left hand in this sense, and then do um, an inverted roll sticking. So we'll go left, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. Here, we're gonna be playing down strokes um, or accents. So here we're gonna be starting from the elevator. I'm using my pen. Here we're gonna be starting from uh, tacit up to play the accent, or we're gonna be playing uh, a downstroke because we're gonna be stopping the motion. We're gonna stop the rebound from traveling back up to forte heights. Cause we wanna set up for a nice low piano note. So we have two stroke types that we're really focusing on. The upstroke, which sounds like a tap, in this sense. And then we also have the downstroke or the accent in which we're gonna stop the note, uh, or stop the bead in a low position, stop the stick, whatever you wanna call it, stop the motion. Let's talk about three goals that you should aim for in this exercise. One, increased efficiency in any accent tap pattern. So anytime you're gonna play two heights, um, you should have a more refined and defined piano sound and look. And you should also have a more refined and defined voluminous accent, all right? So anytime you're gonna be moving in this, in this realm, we'll just know that it's faster, that it's uh, not harder, but there is more tension. There's more resistance we feel. There's more weight in the hand that's being sent 
Just side note on the comment weight, like your hand doesn't change weight, it's the same weight. It's just the feeling of throwing more weight. So throwing less weight, I'm, I'm not allowing the freedom of motion. So I'm dealing with throwing less force, less forces, less forces are happening against my wrist. Versus here, if I'm just like going crazy, if I'm going here, then I should be feeling a lot of weight change um, from the change of direction in the forearm to the wrist. Okay, so this should increase the, the feeling in the hands and also the awareness of, I guess, what to expect on output. Like if you're thinking ahead, and you're gonna play pair little pair little pair little pair little pa. You know to not put too much energy in the low end, and to put faster, lighter, flexible, more energy into the accents, or like a more bright energy. And then here at the low end, it's gonna feel a little bit more in the in the back fingers, maybe. Or you'll feel the pocket change. Okay. And as a third goal for this exercise, it's to move in time. So because we're taking the rest out, there's less time to sit and tacit down or tacit up position, like just frozen tacit up or frozen frozen tacit down. So we don't want to hang too long at either one here. We want to think about being constant with the motion. So when you do the downstroke, you'll feel the residual bounce, maybe a brief pause, but you're not going to stop and lock at the low end. So we're not popping and locking for accents and taps. We're just kind of smoothly transitioning weight from low end to high end, high end to low end. And just to recap, those three goals, increased efficiency at accent taps, increased awareness of the forces involved with accents and taps, and then also a more fluid motion or constant, consistent motion with everything you play. All right, let's try this out. Taking off the rat pad twice through. First, right, right, left, left. Second time or on the repeat, left, right, right, left, left. Something definitely to note while playing the exercise is not to overplay and try and stay consistent with the amount of pressure you put into the stick the amount of pressure you're aiming to put through the drum or the pad. So if constant motion and efficiency is the test or the lesson here, don't forget to practice other tempos. So in one rep, you should feel three different speeds at which you're practicing the same technique. Now, does that mean the technique changes? Sort of, yeah. So what happens when we play it faster is just the motion shortens, but all the principles should be the same. So we should still be able to maintain a large range of contrast or dynamic difference and still maintain the principles of constant motion lots of velocity, lots of sound, a full look, and then also, if I didn't say it already, contrast between the piano and the forte. And be nice to yourself. Like, we don't want to damage anything by overplaying. We do want to play full, we do want to play uh, very quiet, but we don't want to be too tight and, and hurt ourselves by absorbing the shock uh, with too tight of a grip more reps. And we're going to crank it up one more time. Again, the point here is to be applicable to all the music that you play. <sighs> Let's try this 180. Five, six, seven. Hey, so I hope these videos help. I really do. If anything, comment down below. Let me know how I can help you differently. I'm gonna keep going with a few different stroke types and things that I know, some secrets around the knowledge that I've just been exposed to. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. This has been Brandon with Hussy Percussion. Hopefully I was recording all of that.